Get a small team together of people, like-minded people, who are passionate about your film. You write from your heart and passion and instinct first and foremost. You're gonna tap into some universal stuff. Don't show guns. Comedy tells the truth, and specifically it tells the truth about people. There's a lot of talented people that never make it because they don't understand the business. Our guest today, Dr. Linda Seeger, has written the book, Writing Subtext, What Lies Beneath. That's the subtext, is the roots or the bottom of the iceberg. Welcome to the show, Linda. Thank you, Forrest. I'm happy to be here. All right, let's talk about subtext. What is it and how can people incorporate it into their writing? Well, subtext is the underlying truth that is often covered up by words or gestures. So if if I said to somebody, do you think I look fat in this dress? And they say, oh, it's fine. You can tell by the tone of your voice that it's probably not fine. And if I said, you know, I'm really calm, but um, <laughs> if I were doing all that, you would say the gesture is telling you the truth and what I am saying to you is not really quite the truth. So it's the truth that is often covered up. Sometimes people don't know the truth. Sometimes people say things because of, you know, something bad happened in their background and they're pulling it into their conversation without realizing it. But um, subtext is really the truth. So sometimes like sarcasm is actually subtext. Uh, it, yeah, it could be if the sarcasm is covering up, um, you know, if to say, yeah, you look just great. And I say, I would be a little concerned about that compliment because the sarcastic tone is maybe saying I really don't. And you see subtext in a lot of different places. Um, dating, you know, when, when people first start dating and they meet somebody and she gives him her number and he says, thanks. <laughs> so, I have no idea what that thanks means. And so whenever you have a feeling of, I'm not sure what's really going on, probably you're encountering subtext. There's a joke in Hollywood when people say the check is in the mail, probably it isn't. And when people say, you know, I'm really honest, I would never cheat you, get worried. <laughs> and now in a script or in a movie, um, how do you write subtext? Because it seems to me like a lot of times the actor may have to bring that into the scene. How can you actually put that in your script? Well, one of the things is you choose your words very carefully. Um, one of my favorite examples of subtext that I use in the book, writing subtext, is from Ordinary People. Great, great movie for subtext. Everything is a mess in these people's lives. And anytime you say, how's it going? Great. It's just great. Well, it was you know, are you going to see somebody? Yeah, oh, that's great. That word great is used over and over and over again. And what's really going on is it isn't great. And so the writer chooses those words very carefully. And a good writer will hone and tweak and rewrite and rewrite because you don't want to be direct. It's kind of like in dating if you know people meet over the bar and order their white wine, that chances are they don't start out by saying, oh, you're really cute, I'd really like to go out with you. They start out by saying, oh, this is great wine, and he says, yeah, this is really great. What he's really saying is, you look great, I'm really interested, and this is so delicious, and you know, you say, what word am I going to use? Is delicious or fabulous? What word would have some resonance that he's really talking about her and not about the wine? One of my favorite examples of subtext is in um, Sideways. And when uh, Miles is talking about why he loves Pinot Noir, he's not talking about the wine. He's talking about himself. And when he says the flavors are so brilliant and there, you just have to bring them out and you have to work to bring them out, he's really talking about himself so you see that in romantic comedies a lot 
um, or actually I've noticed it since I, since I've, um, uh, read your book. Um, yeah. I've noticed in, um, like these romantic comedies, Hallmark channel, you know, when I walk by the yeah. living room and my wife's watching them, <laughs> but they, yeah. they actually do stuff like that. They'll, they'll start talking and then they go, are you, are we still talking about us? That's yes. subtext. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes uh, one of the examples I use in writing subtext is shadow of doubt. And um, the main character says something like, I could just, and then he stops. He's really starting to say, I could just kill you. Or in As Good As It Gets, when the Jack Nicholson character comes in the bar and he looks pretty good. And Carol, Helen Hunt says, you look so, you look great. <laughs> you say, we know what you were ready to say. So it can be used in so many different ways. Um, in writing subtext, I talk about backstory and about, I have a whole chapter on love in this edition. And, um, you know, just, just sort of uh, talk about all the different ways you can find subtext, even underneath the genre. Sometimes you watch a movie that's a horror comedy and you say, why am I laughing? Well, they let you know you're supposed to laugh, like Airplane. Airplane's a great example. They're ready to crash the plane and you are just laughing out loud over this because they let you know in the subtext you're supposed to laugh. Now, when you write, uh, this can work in a, in a novel too, I assume. Yes, uh, yes. When you write, should you shoot for the subtext right away or should you just write and then kind of go back and add the subtext? Uh, or does most, it just kind of naturally flow? Yeah. Most writers say they write the text first to make sure that they get the really important information and then they start working. I, I asked a sitcom writer once, I said, how many times do you rewrite? And she says, well, I did 21 drafts this morning of the, just the scene. And so you keep honing it. And one of the things in this new second edition that I've done is I have expanded it for novelists and short story writers. So the first edition was more for screenplays. But what I did is I took books that had been turned into films. And in the second edition, I'm looking at a variety of actually taking, um, you know, lines from the book to show how the novelist has integrated. Now, subtext can also be done with actions or facial expressions too correct yeah yeah is you know somebody can say oh, i really like you and they're grimacing while saying it so you can have that um or you know somebody's holding a gun and say don't worry <laughs> what made you want to write a book on subtext like what what piqued your interest because i don't believe there are too many books on it no this was the first book that was a practical book on on the subject um and there really there really aren't in fact when michael wheezy asked me if i was interested i had not thought of doing the subject and i said yes well there were no books for me to look at so what I did is I asked myself, where do I see subtext in screenplays and films? And I said, definitely ordinary people in shadow of doubt and a fabulous episode called Abnormal Psychology from Cheers. Great example of subtext. And then I started looking, reading those very carefully and say, what's the pattern? What do I see? Oh, subtext is an action, subtext is in gesture, subtext is in dialogue. And then in this new edition, I have some case studies, Double Indemnity, Avatar, um, The Big Short. I added a chapter about analogies, which are like similes. And, you know, Big Short is filled with this is like this. And when you begin to work with the like or the simile, you begin to get level. So if I said, well, he's like a pit bull or he's a pit bull, you say that's a wholly different thing than if I said he's a terrier or he's just such a cute little poodle. Um, they say, well, he's not really a poodle, he's really a person, but he's like a poodle and, and you bring all sorts of associations. So one of the things you're always doing with subtext is what are the resonances? What's, what do we bring to this word and why should the writer use that word and not the other word? Okay, so basically Citizen Kane 
the movie Citizen Kane is kind of based on subtext. If yeah, now that, like as Rosebud. you're speaking, the one road, ro the one word, Rosebud, the whole movie's based around is subtext. So and just I'm, think of all the associations and all the backstory of when he lost Rosebud and what had happened in his background. So now I get it. I'm pulling, it's, it's like the subterranean. And in fact, it, you know, if you notice on the book cover, you notice there's roots underneath the tree is what you see. And so that's the subtext is the roots or the bottom of the iceberg or the underwater island <laughs> that is there. All right, Linda, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you directly, can they do that if they had any questions? Yes, my, my website is lindasager.com. Just think of Bob Seeger, it's spelled the same way, but pronounced slightly different. And my email is lynda at lindaseger.com. You can get the book through me if you want, but you can certainly get it on Amazon and barnesandnoble.com and at perhaps some local bookstores as well. All right, Linda, thank you for joining me today. Yes, thank you so much, I enjoyed this.